The fourth season marches on. New look TJ is a hit. Lewis Central mixing it up with the Mustangs, and the Titans go deep. The Falcons reign in the Monarchs, or is it the other way around? Abraham Lincoln finding its way around. The Lynx learning. The LC softball team hitting its stride. AL swinging away and piling up the W's. Hi, my name is Dave Putnam, father of Kaylee Putnam. Bluff Sports Zone starts now. Hello, I'm JJ Davis and welcome to the latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. The high school baseball season is in full swing and we got kind of a mixed bag here in the Bluffs. Now Thomas Jefferson has a new coach. Keith Midkiff was a member of the Yellow Jackets 1993 state championship team. He takes over a club that won 8 and 29 a year ago. Here's IDUB TV student Matt Corum. TJ hosting Sioux City West June 17th, looking for their second win in a row following an 11-game losing streak. Top of the first inning with West with one on one out, with the Jackets Stephen Stiffens during a double play to end the threat. The game scoreless through three, but TJ the first on the board in the fourth is a single to center by Brendan Anderson. He's Thomas Jefferson, the one nothing lead. Following the fifth, and the Jackets are at it again, two on one out, and Jonathan Love draws the walk to load the bases. The very next batter, first baseman Clayton Starner, laces this one to right field, driving in two as Thomas Jefferson takes a commanding three-zip lead. Moments later, Wolverines looking to pick off Starner, but Love capitalizes on the lack of focus by the defense, stealing home and extending the lead four to nothing. The Jackets continue to just pour it on as a shot to the right field wall by pitcher Matt Brophy brings around another run and the big inning for the Jackets continues claiming a 5-0 lead. The final now comes as the next batter Jake Meyer drives the ball deep into the gap in right center. The ball rolling all the way to the wall. Meyer lays out an RBI triple as TJ posts a five-run fifth giving themselves a 6-0 lead late in the game. Plenty of run support on the hill for Brophy. The senior grabs a complete game shutout with a 6-0 win. And after the doubleheader sweep, TJ pushes their win streak to three games. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Matt Gorham. Thanks, Matt. And then there's Lewis Central. Now, the last time I saw the Titans, they were struggling to find their way. And since then, well, here's IDUP TV student Frank Prazen. Lewis Central taking on the Mustangs of Shenandoah. Top first one on one out. Tens pitcher Josh Jones gives up an RBI single to Jackson Baker. Visitors up one to nothing. Bottom of the second run on first. Shenandoah pitcher Jake Johnson attempts to throw over, but it's off target, and Lewis Central's Peyton Messling takes second. Next up, Kyla Nixon with a high chopper to left. Runners on the corner. Blake Elan. Drives on the left for an RBI single. LC 10 hits overall. Home team takes a 5-1 lead after two. Austin Simmons pops one up to the second baseman. Who drops the ball? Lewis Central scores four runs and they need to take a 9-1 lead. On the hill, Josh Jones bringing the heat. The left-hander fires a two-hitter complete game with six strikeouts. Getting his third win this season. Bottom of the fourth, Caleb Shudak with the bases loaded. Hits a... Grand slam, being his first home run of the season and his seventh RBI on the night. Lewis Central beats Shenandoah 13 to one. The stars have gone pretty well also, just keep the ball low and use your defense. He had his curveball going pretty good and also his fastball, so he was, he was on tonight. Some like good things happened, and Shudak's grand slam really is a good motivation just to get everybody going and keep him up. So that was nice to see the way we swung the bats tonight. Lewis Centro has run five of the last seven for the Bluff Sports Zone. I'm Frank Prazen.
Lewis Central looking for the sweep of Red Oak Friday night. The bats would be hot early. Titans Austin Simmons gets all of this pitch by Red Oaks Taylor Jesse as the junior crushes it for a two run home run. CLC takes an early 2 0 lead in the very first inning. Then comes the second. Kyler Nixon blasts this to the left center gap. It rolls to the wall. Two more Titans roll in. Lewis Central a six run inning to go up eight zip. Third inning. Catcher Joel Thompson decides he wants in on the route as the freshman puts a charge into the ball with a monster solo shot. But LC wasn't done there. Red Oak looking for any way out of the inning, but they throw the ball away. Simmons scores from third, and the Titans push their lead to 12 0. The hits just keep on coming, and in the fourth, Paxton Whitaker drops in a double to the left as it brings around a sprinting Jordan Schaefer. The very next batter, Caleb Shudek, sends a heater through the infield just past the shortstop's glove as Whitaker rounds third, scoring easily. The Titans taking a 14-0 lead. Looking to end this one early, Noah Hahn gets a base hit, bringing in the runner from second, a loose central. They just maul the Tigers 15-0. They look to keep their win streak going and their bats hot moving forward. We went undefeated this week, so hopefully we can keep that rolling into tournament time. Oh, well, I kind of, kind of thought we'd we come out swinging, come out strong, but it's nice to get this hit like that right off the bat. Stay consistent. I mean, that's probably been staying focused and staying consistent. It's probably been our big bugaboo early in the year. We seem to overcome that, and now they're starting to beat some people that we've struggled the last couple years. They're starting to believe in themselves and believe in, hey, when we step on the field, we can beat anybody we come up against. So that's that's the positive thing about that. Lewis Central completes the sweep and proves 16 to 6. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Matt Corum. Thanks, Matt. So LC is coming on. Hey, what about the Titans softball team? But first, St. Albert playing hardball with some monarchs when we come back. At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. of the Bluff Sports Zone, brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family-owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. So what? St. Albert lost four starters from a state playoff team a year ago. So what? The Falcons have lost just a handful of games and are ranked sixth in the state in Class 2A. And heading into their homer against Dennis and Schleswig, Jeremy Petrie's club had won four in a row. Here's IDUB TV student Jake Wright. Hawk at 10 showdown between the Falcons of St. Albert and the Monarchs of Denison Slashway. Top of the first. The visitors, Sean Houston, lines the ball to right. Austin Thole around to score. Monarchs lead this one 1 to nothing. 
In the same inning, Jake Petrie gives up a base hit to the opposing pitcher. Brayden Schroop pushing the lead, 2-0. Top of the second, Shea Patterson receives the ground ball. Throw comes up short, brings in Tim Wingrove from third. Dennison Schleswig up 3-0. In sixth inning, Monarchs up 5-zip. St. Albert's Shea Patterson with the RBI hit. Falcons are on the board. Petri goes the distance with two strikeouts. Gives up 12 hits overall. The home team fighting back in the bottom of the seventh. Nick Golitzer with a base rip, scoring Eli Finn. But that's not enough as Dennison Schleswig stuns St. Albert 5-2. Pitcher kept us off balance, I mean, to hold us to four hits. We hit the ball, uh, we just hit it at him, but uh, you know, we make mistakes against good teams. It comes back to get you. Yeah, we need to be able to hit the ball a lot better than that. Uh, we got to play a little better defense. We can't make four errors against really anybody. Pitching struggled for a little bit. Jake struggled a little on the mound, but he fought and he fought all the way through, and I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, we were just early on the ball. We weren't sitting on it, kind of just getting ahead of ourselves. And we didn't really miss the ball. I mean, we just had hit the ball right at him. We never really could do about that. Sometimes it, sometimes it falls, sometimes it don't. They're a good team. They all played us. They have our number, but hopefully we'll get them next time. St. Albert is now 12-4-1. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Jake Wright. Thanks, Jake. Now, what about Abraham Lincoln? The Lynx, a lot of holes to fill. Lost five seniors who played a lot in 2013, and that's just for starters. Here's IDUB TV student Zach Harper Blunt. <laughs> Lynx and Crusaders and Missouri River Conference doubleheader action. Bottom of the first, Ryan McDermott hits a pop-up a mile high, but the shortstop loses it in the sun and the run scores. The home team striking first, it's one zip. Top of the second, Trenton Salzma in the box and he crushes the ball over the wall for a two-run homer. Bishop Heelan capturing the lead two to one. Not much later, Nick McCann pulls one to left field, but the Sun is not making things easy for the left fielder who misses it and another run comes across. It's now a 3-1 Crusaders lead. Fielding issues plaguing the Lynx. Top of the third, Bishop Heelan still adding to their lead. Tyler Cropley hits one to the right fielder who can't make the play. It's now a 5-1 lead for the visiting team. AL capitalizing on mistakes made by the Crusaders in the bottom of the third. Kyle Crow gets walked, which brings in the runner. Lynx trail 6-2. Then Alex Baird gets hit by the pitch, which brings in another. AL cuts it to three. Drew Kasperbauer with four strikeouts and three walks in game one. Still in the third, Kasperbauer trying to bait the batter, but it gets away from the catcher, and the Crusaders lead is cut down to 6-4. To the visiting team answering back the next inning. Philip Jacobson hits one to the gap in left center. It brings in two runs as the Crusaders' lead is extended 8-4. John Smith in the pitch for the Lynx in the fifth to try to keep Heelan from scoring any more runs. However, Bishop Heelan starting to pull away. Dalton Sauce hits one into the gap to bring in a run. It's now 9-4. A couple batters later, McCann lines one to left to bring in another run. Bishop Heelan now leads 11-4. The Crusaders having 11 hits in game one of the doubleheader. Not too much later, Jacobson launches one over the fence for his second home run of the year as the Crusaders win the game one in five innings, 17 to four. We were, we, were, we were very confident that we could go out there and we could get it. Uh, we scored four in I think the third or something. And uh, yeah, we were, we were pretty confident that we could, we could get it. But we uh, made a bunch of mistakes and uh, about it. Our biggest thing is, is progress, you know, getting better development. Um, you know, we have to move forward from every single game, not just looking at scores, but looking at how we performed in those games. Uh, if, we, if we absolutely get beat, you know, in a situation where we don't beat ourselves, then we got to tip our hat. But um, if we're doing things that aren't helping our situation, then we need to improve upon those things. Uh, the biggest thing is progress right now. The Lynx losing game two, 13 to six. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Zach Harper Blunt. Thanks, Zach. So here's the way it looks the last day in June. AL struggling. The Lynx 3-18. My heart goes out to Coach Larson. Just got to hang in there. It's going to get better. It's got to. Looking pretty good for sixth-ranked St. Albert. The Falcons 15-4.
Lewis Central and Coach Tool have now won nine in a row. And remember, you want to peak at the end of the year. The Yellow Jackets and their new head coach getting better. TJ now 7 and 15. Meanwhile, the softball season rolls on as well. And so does Abraham Lincoln. Next up, hey, same deal for LC after the break. <laughs> For more than a quarter century, thousands of athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sports Med. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury, getting you back in the action. Jenny Ed Sports Med partners with Neb Ortho, giving you consistent one-on-one -on -one care from diagnosis to rehab. And since every injury an athlete is different, they've even developed a sports injury clinic specifically designed for athletes. Jenny Ed Sports Med. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning is 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash, 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Here's your check. You got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone is brought to you by Toby Jack's Mineola Steakhouse. Serving customers with dine-in, catering, takeout, banquet room, and more. Toby Jack's Mineola Steakhouse, home of the Thursday night taco ride. I'm used to Lewis Central being right there. Always one of the better teams in Southwest Iowa. And this year? Well, for one, the Titans lost their starting pitcher and catcher over the last five years. That's a big wow. And then there's the rest. Here's IDUB TV student Zach Harper Blunt. After picking up a 9-2 victory in game one, Lewis Central looking for the doubleheader sweep against Shenandoah June 19th. The Titans striking first in the opening frame. Jamie Bush with an RBI single and Mackenzie Hatcher comes around to score. LC leads 1-0. Then McKenna Dufek hits a fly to the right fielder, and she drops the catch, and a run will score. Titans now up 2-0. Still in the first, home team's lead continuing to grow. Up 5 when Casey Hohenthaner gets one past the shortstop, and Josie Shudek scores. It's 6-0 after a monstrous first inning. LC fans pleased with the offense's performance, and the tear at the plate continues. In the third, Mackenzie Kennard hits a grounder to the third baseman for the easy out, but the catcher can't handle the ball, and the run scores. Titans now up 10-zip. Shenandoah bouncing back in the fourth after an air and two straight walks. The Mustangs scoring on the passed ball. It is now 10-1. Then Kaylee Burt, a blooper to right center, and two runs will score for Shenandoah. LC's lead cut to 10-4. But the six-run cushion plenty for Alexandria Wolf, who comes in the pitch in the top of the fifth, one down, two down. All three batters struck out in order. Lewis Central looking to put this one away. In the bottom half, Kennard at the plate, and the incoming freshman rips one up the middle to play two more in a 14-4 win. The Titans grab the doubleheader sweep. I'm just really excited to get the bats going again. I mean, we've been struggling for a few games with our hitting. And so these last couple games that we've been playing has really picked up and it's um, encouraging to know that we're finally getting our bats going again. The momentum and we were really lively in the dugout tonight, which I think helped us a lot. 
and it also keeps us going for our games ahead. All I ask the girls is play consistent, play hard from start to finish every inning, um, if, whether it be three innings, five innings, seven innings, just play hard from start to finish at each every game. The Twins push the Titans' win streak to seven games. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Zach Harper Blunt. Thanks, Zach. And then there's AL. The Lynx have picked up right where they left off in 2013. And you know what that means, wins, and plenty of them. Here's IDUP TV student Frank Prazen. Abraham Lincoln taken on the stars of Sioux City North. Top of the first, Lauren Nansen with the strikeout to end her first and only inning of work. Bottom of the inning, leadoff batter Madison Sapienza shot to the gap and left. Who can't make the play? The freshman hits a third with the triple and later scores. Later in the inning, Deanna Roth. A slow roll to third. Everybody is safe. Kaylin Damgar cracks the plate, putting the links up 2-0. to zero. Next batter, Mercedes Hart wants to join the fun. With a base hit, Roth scores 4-0. AL bats around, still in the first. Madison Sapienza to the left side and the throws off line. Katie Richards comes home. Deanna Roth, Leonard left, bringing in two more links. Abraham Lincoln scores nine runs in the first inning. Top of the second, new pitcher, AL's Deanna Roth, gives up this two hits on the night. Later in the inning, slow road to third. Run scores, Sioux City gets on the board. Struggling on the mound, the sophomore walks two in a row, bringing home a run. Sioux City North shows nine to two. The right-hander settles down, strikes out three overall, and gets their first run of the year. The Lynx strike out the Stars 14 to three. You know, it feels pretty awesome that we had two games tonight. We finished up a game, and then we we had a whole game that was planned, and two conference wins. Feels pretty awesome. Do next time, like in your outing, like what are you gonna build on or work on or to get better on your pitching? Um, build on more self confidence, getting on the mound, um, just being more confident with myself and being confident with my defense behind me and going more at the batters. AL has won four of their last five. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Frank Prazen. Thanks, Frank. Up next, our play of the week. It's a gimme on the other side. Jack Frost, you do have beautiful teeth. My, my what? Are they really as white as they say? Yes. <gasps> oh, they really do sparkle like freshly fallen snow. This is an excellent example of what teeth should look like. Check out the iridescence of that incisor. The beauty of that bicuspid. The magnificence of those molars. <laughs> and the best way to achieve such terrific teeth is brushing. Two minutes, twice a day. Not 30 seconds, not a minute, 45. Two minutes. That's all it takes. They're beautiful. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. AL Law City Player of the Year, Lauren Meeker, but that hasn't stopped the Lynx. And I really like Val Halligan. She's not just the second year head coach, but a cheerleader after every pitch and every play. And her team responds. Why, just take a look at the record. Here's IDUB TV student Jake Wright. Beautiful night on the diamond for the AL Lynx as they host the Cyclones of Harlem. Bottom of the first, home team gets started early. Deanna Roth doubles down the left field line, scoring two. Abraham Lincoln already up 3-0 in the second inning. Lynx pitcher Lauren Nansen helps herself by crushing a monster shot 
her fifth of the season. Lynx lead five zip after two. Top of the third, Anna Peterson to short. Bad throw, Winnie Warner scores. Peterson to second, the visitors are on the board. Fourth inning, Cyclones, Cassie Gregg doubles down the line. One of just three Harlan hits on the night. But AL starter Lauren Nansen ends the threat, striking out the next two batters. The junior throws a complete game. Nansen up her record to 11 and two. Runs come easy in this one as Barrett bloops one to center. Links now up nine to one. Later in the fourth inning, Ali Green hits a sharp ground ball to the shortstop. The runner is out at home. One last chance, top of the fifth. Pops her up. This one ends in five. Abraham Lincoln wins big, 11 for one. Uh, you know, it's a really big win. They're a great team, and it's a strong win for us to have. Um, our girls really played hard tonight. We had quite a few hits, and we had pretty good defense, so we had a great game tonight. Um, I was just throwing it away and keeping it away from the batters. They have decent hitters, and I wanted to not give them much to hit, but still attack them. Being confident on the bases and taking chances that we normally wouldn't take and just being aggressive. The Lynx have now won four in a row. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Jake Wright. Thanks, Jake. Now, AL sits at an impressive 20 and three. Lauren Nansen smokes five home runs, five, as Abraham Lincoln wins the Lynx Classic. Nansen ties the school record for homers in a season with 12. Thomas Jefferson, well, back to square one, just trying to hang in there. TJ and its young team gaining valuable experience. LC, 17 and 11. The Titans and coach Whitstruck starting to dial it in. Same deal for St. Albert and its new coach. It's a long season, especially when you're coming out on the short end. And now it's time for our play of the week, brought to you by Buena Vista University. Bases juiced at Lewis Central. The Titans' Caleb Schudek smokes it. His first home run of the year for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But even better than that, it's a grand slam. The sophomore, seven RBIs on the night. LC smokes Shenandoah 13 to one. Caleb Schudek with our play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by Buena Vista University. Face-to-face -face classes start every eight weeks, right here in Council Bluffs. And so, the fourth season continues to go deep into the summer. And don't look now, but another second season is just a couple of innings away. And remember, to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning into the Council Bluffs News with Marie Zeitner. And so, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.